Hello, welcome to Small Cap Nation. We are at the Markham Microcap Conference today in New York City. And with me today, Rick Schumacher, uh, the founder and CEO of Pressure Biosciences. We are a life science tools company. We make instruments and associated consumables to sell to the research market. Uh, all of our systems are based upon a principle called pressure cycling technology. In essence, we take pressure in a chamber and everything in nature has a pressure point, every biologic, every virus, every cell. And what we're able to do is offer the researchers around the world the ability to break open the cells and release all the good stuff. The good stuff, the proteins, the lipids, the DNA and the RNA. This, we're at what's called the molecular age. And we need to get to this, these biomolecules. How do you do it? The old fashioned way, which is what most people are still doing, is to beat them up mechanically, break them up mechanically. We treat them sort of like a sponge. We squeeze the cells in a pressure chamber. Interesting. Okay, so who would be universities, I assume, would be a major customer? Our, our customer are about 500,000, potential customers are about 500,000 researchers all over the world that are working with biological samples. These are people working in the food industry, in the human, in the human healthcare industry, studying cancer and heart disease, antibioterror, uh, in the agriculture business. When you're working with cells, whether they're normal or cancer or pre-cancer, whether they're animal, microbe, human, or plant, uh, I think you could use our system. So how, for someone who is not a scientist or involved in this, what might be a practical application for what your product can do? Well, when you think about discoveries in science, and every day we hear them on the news, we read them in the paper, discoveries. These discoveries are coming from scientists who spend years looking at cells, looking at proteins, looking at lipids inside the cell, trying to determine why did one person get a disease and someone else not? Why did one person recover and somebody else not? They spend ages looking at different parts of proteins to try to find the answer. And once they find the answer, they can come up with a cure. We're the guys that are giving them a new 21st century way to break open a cell that will give them, we think, more proteins, more lipids in better quality so we can enhance their research. So when you hear about research and discoveries that are going coming out in human cancer, human disease, animal disease, hopefully down the road, some of those came from the fact that they broke open the cells in the beginning and that they used our system to do that. That's interesting because I talk to a lot of biotech companies and they may specialize in cancer right. or maybe Alzheimer's, but your machine could apply to a number of different diseases. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. We're, our customers are our pharmaceutical companies like Merck, Lilly, Pfizer, Monsanto, Bristol Myers Squibb, Amgen, Biogen. These are all customers of ours. Our customers are government agencies like the NIH, the FBI, the FDA, the CDC, the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Our customers are academic institutions. We have Harvard and Stanford and UCLA and Rockefeller and many other uh, academic institutions. So we're very proud. We're a small company. Uh, we've got an amazing technology. And our goal is to break a paradigm that's existed for probably 50 years. We're walking in a company of nine people with a technology that many people have not heard about, and we're saying, Dr. So-and-so, we have a new method for you to break open your cells to study the cancer, to study the heart disease, and we're gonna do it in a way that we pulse pressure, pressures that equal or exceed the pressure at the bottom of the deepest part of the ocean, 17, 20, 30, 35,000 pounds per square inch. Wow, so the financials. Um, just talk about the potential market cap. Um, you mentioned you have nine employees. What should investors know about that? Well, we've gone through a rough time for the last four years. Yes, it's uh, been a tough time for biotech. It's been a tough yeah. time for biotech and it's been a tough time for us. Uh, but we succeeded in that tough time. We have, in the last year, we've done some amazing things. I'm an incredible group. My top three officers have been with me now for 10 years. The company is a little over 10 years old. And uh, we have, it just in the last six months, we've paid off $3 million in what's called toxic debt. We never allowed this debt to hurt us. We needed it to grow the company. It's all been paid off. So that is gone from our balance sheet. We've signed a deal, an exclusive two-year deal, with a very large company called Cyax. They're the leading company in the world in selling what's an instrument called a mass spectrometer to study proteins. They're the number one company in the world. Our system actually sits in front of their system. Our system and their system can, in essence, make one plus one equal three. Terrific company, they're part of the Danaher Group, which is a $68 billion company. So we have an exclusive co-marketing deal for two years with Cyax. We've paid off all of this toxic debt, it's gone forever. 
We've raised other money, so we have some money in the bank, and we're coming out with a new instrument next week and showing it next week at the major meeting of the year for this instrument called a mass spectrometer. So it's a very exciting time for us. We've kind of gone through the woods, and now we're seeing the sunlight. The balance sheet looks better, new products on the horizon. Absolutely. So and, and I should say that we made a decision about three years ago to go after the key opinion leaders in the world. We brought on some of the top protein scientists in the world who now have published, there's over 100 papers in peer-reviewed journals that talk about the, the advantages of using our system to break open cells to get the proteins to be studied and the lipids to be studied. So it's been a very tough time. We think the stock is very undervalued. Uh, we were delisted from the NASDAQ to the OTC and it's reduced the number of investors that could actually look at the company. We've made it very public that we intend to move back onto the NASDAQ. We've started the process of doing that before the end of this year. So this company now is a far different company than it was even six months ago. Thank you very much, Rick, for joining us today. And thank you as well for joining us on Small Cap Nation.